audio compression is so confusing at first. You turn virtual knobs and press buttons and either you can't hear any change or your track suddenly sounds horrible and you're not sure why. In this video, you'll learn the basics of audio compression so that you understand what each setting can do and how to use compression so you improve the sounds of your tracks instead of destroying them. Hi, I'm Trevor Dimoff. I transform musicians into songwriters at EpicSongwriting.com. Watch this video all the way through and then click the description link for a written summary and bonus tips to make mixing with compression easier and faster. If you learn anything interesting, be sure to subscribe and ring the little bell so that you know when I drop new videos. Now let's get compressing. We've edited the mix, we've EQ'd the mix, it's time for compression. I'm going to open up my FX bin, audio effects, and under dynamics. I have a ton of compressors. I'm going to be using the Sonatus. This is an awesome one for teaching because you can see what's going on and it has all the parameters. Some don't. So we'll go through quick ones real fast. Number one, most important game, help. Get to that one in just a sec. Threshold. When does the compressor start to affect? So it starts at zero to B means it won't turn on at all, all the way down to wherever you're going. The ratio is how far it bends. I'm just going to show you the curve so you can see what it looks like. The higher that is, the harder it's going to compress. So for guitars, most of your compression should be between three and two, and the ratio of two and four. Anything higher than that, you start to really smash it down. You don't really want to go that far. I'm going to be starting it off at three and playing from there. The knee is how far it bends. Hard means it starts compressing immediately. And then there's a bend to it. So I'm going to leave this on 10, the default. You can touch and grab, or you can double click and type in. There's two on this types of compressors, normal and vintage. Vintage, well, she, <laughs> vintage starts at, levels out the curve afterwards. I usually use normal. The attack is how long it takes for the compressor to turn on. So in this case, after 15 milliseconds of anything going past minus 15 decibels, it will kick in. So I'll show you what that sounds like in a little bit. And the release is how long the compressor stays on. This one has a limiter function on and off, and TCR is a special algorithm that will keep it from pumping. So if you have it on, it won't uh, turn on and off really quickly. That's something that you can start to hear if you uh, compress too hard. So let's have a little listen. I've soloed the first acoustic guitar. We're going to start with just the guitar. So in this case, it's not kicking on at all. This is how much it's compressing, what's, how much is being removed. So as I increase this, lower the threshold, it's kicking on sooner and crushing more. So everything past, in this case, minus 30 decibels. If it goes up three decibels, it's only one instead. So that's what the ratio means. This is actually making it louder, and this is harder. So I'm gonna go back to three. Now, if I turn it on right away, it's now cutting out the, the beginnings. Hear the difference. Now you can hear strumming. There's also less compression because the signal is dropped back down by that. So 15 milliseconds is pretty good for an acoustic guitar. The release, it's turning off right away. So there's very little compression. If I leave it on too long, the compression's on all the time. It never uncompresses. So the release time, in this case, I'm strumming on the eighth note. My release, or my tempo is 190. So that if you invert that, uh, it's about 3.1 seconds per beat. 3 point beat, 3.1 beats per second, excuse me, which is about 320 milliseconds. So if I am at that, I'm actually going to be half of that. So about 100 milliseconds should get me off of there. Try that again. Should have this release before it starts again. So listening to that. This is with no compression at all. 
you can hear more tone in the strings. Now, you're saying, but why would we compress it? We're making it softer. Here's the cheat, or the benefit. Right now, we're going to reset this. So I'm bringing it down at a maximum of 2.9. So let's add that back in. So now we hear more tone. We've compensated for anything we're taking out. And that's the real benefit to a compressor. So we take tone away from the attack and then bring everything back up. Let's do this for your way. Attack starts here as we slope it down. So this is the main body of the guitar sound. We're going to bring this down and then bring everything back up. So it sounds like we've just raised the tail of it rather than doing anything with the attack. Now there's a few other fun buttons here. Number one, setup. So I can have setup one. I can copy this to B. So now I have two versions of this. I can flick back and forth. So let's say I'm not sure about my release time. Go back to, uh, let's go to setup A. Now for setup B, oops, I just changed it. So here we are, 200 for this one. So we're gonna compare the two. This is one of the benefits of this particular compressor. So set up B, and always make sure you click on the gain, the gain reduction, excuse me, that because it only shows you the peak until you stop it. So you're only seeing the peak. If you change it and reduce the compression, you're going to see the old gain. So always double check that before you start playing around with the makeup. So right now my setup B sounds better. So that's the one I'm going to stick with for the moment. And just for fun, let's try setup A. We're going to go duplicate this. So we're going to copy from B to A. So they're the same again. And now for fun, setup B. Let's just change the threshold. Let's bring it up and see what happens. So I found setup A worked better, a little bit more compression, smushed it down a bit. So that's basic compression for the guitar track. Here's another fun little trick. I can switch them, undo to put it back. Control will copy the compressor, exact same setting. So I've already just done my two guitars. For the vocal, well, remember back in the last video I said the strips are awesome. This one has a compressor. Let's see what happens on our vocals. So I'm going to take this off. I need a decent cup of coffee. Feeling so what I have right here is a double. This expander, I'm going to turn this off for now. Everything below it gets cut off. So anything softer than, in this case, minus 65 dB, doesn't register. It's zeroed. There's nothing there. I'm going to take that out of the way for the second, for the moment. Compression. Same idea. My thresh ratio is here. So in this case, I'm doing three to one. I like a little softer compression for vocals. And, oh, that's my, that's my ratio over there. Here we go. So I'm going to put this on a two to one. And this ratio is a one to two. So I'll show you what it looks like on a curve. So here, steepen it. So I like to get that right out of the way. I'm going to put that on a four to one right now and experiment with it a little bit. So I'm removing the expander right now and I've just got the compressor. The attack is how fast. So 0.4 milliseconds is pretty quick. Always look at how low can I go. So 0.1 is one ten thousandth of a second all the way up to a tenth of a second. 
oops, let's get this ratio back to where it was. And double clicking to put them back. So leave this at four to one. I've played with this before and it's about where I like it. So we're gonna start with the threshold and then we'll play with the attack, leaving the ratio at two to one. I need a decent cup of coffee. So this is not clicking in very much. Feeling boiling me. I need a decent cup of coffee. It's a lot of compression. Craving quality caffeine. I need a decent cup of coffee. I need exotic feed. I need exotic feed. I need right now, the expander is not doing anything. The compression is a little hot for me. I'll show you what I mean. I need a decent cup of coffee. Feeling boiling me. I need a decent cup of coffee. So, Craving. At that point, it's completely compressed and it doesn't sound as good. You lose a lot of the dynamics. I of need a decent cup of coffee. Feeling boiling me. I need a decent cup of coffee. So looking over here, most of my signal is craving quality caffeine. I need a decent cup of coffee. I need exotic feed. I need exotic. I need a decent cup of coffee. Feeling boiling me. I need a decent cup of coffee. Craving quality caffeine. I need a decent cup of coffee. I need exotic. So that's. Completely I need a decent cup of coffee. Feeling boiling me. So I'm going to solo this for the moment and just let you hear what happens with the expander. I need a decent cup of coffee. Feeling boiling me. I need it. So when that happens, I'm only hearing a little bit of the S's. Let's take this off. I need a decent cup of coffee. Feed. I need a decent cup of coffee. Feeling boiling me. I need a decent cup of coffee. Also watch this meter. Craving quality caffeine. So while I'm singing, it's about minus 30. I Minimum. need a decent cup of coffee. Down to minus 35 once I more. need exotic bead. I need exotic bead. So listening to the ending, I'm going to drop off the expander so we can hear it better. I need I need I need exotic So this is really subtle. When we're when the guitar is playing, we're not going to hear much of this, but it's a nice way to clean up some of the sound. So I've got my DSer first in the chain and then the expander. This one, we can also play them, play around with them, move them. We want the de-esser out of the way first, so we get rid of any problem frequencies. And by the way, most people will tell you this is way too low, but that seems to be what's working for me. Use your ears. Same for the compression. So my attack is two and a half milliseconds, which is really fast, but vocals tend to be much quicker because of that consonants going on in there. So with and without the entire, uh, let's go back to the whole chorus. I need a decent cup of coffee. Feeling boiling me. 
watching the master bus, we can hear. I need see and hear a difference in the volume. So I'll put it with out the as well and then click it on partway through a phrase. I need a decent cup of coffee. Feeling boiling me. I need a decent cup of coffee. Not doing it right. There we go. Great. So let's watch this master meter on the vocal bus. That will give us a better indication. What's coming through here is sometimes processed after the meter, depending on how you set up the faders. So it's often better to look at the master bus or the vocal bus in this case, the bus that it's going to. I need a decent cup of coffee. Turn this off. I need a decent cup of coffee. So it's about a two decibel difference once it's gone through the compressor, compressor and then done the makeup gain. I need a decent cup of coffee. Feeling boiling mean. I need a decent cup of coffee. Now it's always dangerous when you hear something louder because there is a tendency to feel like it sounds better just because it's louder. Let's hear everything in the mix. I need a decent cup of coffee. I need a decent cup of coffee. Feeling boiling me. I need a decent cup of coffee. Craving quality caffeine. I need a decent cup of coffee. I need exotic feed. I need exotic feed. I need and that's compression. Now that you understand the basics of compression, you can use it to make your tracks sound better. It's confusing because the compressor's main function is to make sounds softer by compressing them. When set correctly, the attack time lets the start of the sound through normally. When the compressor cuts in, the ratio sets how much sound is turned down by compressing it, then compensates with makeup gain. The result is the softer parts of the sound seem louder compared to the original sound. To put it another way, the start of the sound is the same, but everything afterwards seems to sound louder. It's confusing because compression is a counterintuitive two-step process, compressing a sound and then turning up again to make it sound better. Some compressors only have a few settings that you can change. Some are constant because these plugins simulate classic hardware compressors. They still sound good if you experiment a little and learn how to set them right. Don't overdo it when you're compressing. That's the biggest mistake people make. Use low ratios between 2 to 1 and 4 to 1 for most situations. Adjust the threshold to compress the de a few decibels of the signal. I usually keep it between 2 and 5 for decibels for most situations. Keep the release time shorter than the time between new notes, otherwise the compressor just stays on all the time and doesn't really improve the sound. The key to using compression is properly setting the makeup gain. Check the compression meter so you know how hard it's compressing and then match it with makeup gain. You can also set a compressor by ear, switch it on and off and adjust the makeup gain so the track seems to be the same volume whether the compressor is on or off. And when you're done, just like I did with EQ, listen to your track and your mix while you turn the compressors on and off so that you're sure that you've actually improved the sounds of your track and your mix. In the next video, you'll learn how to make tracks sound more realistic by learning how to mix with reverb. I'm Trevor Dimoff. I transform musicians into songwriters at epicsongwriting.com. Thanks for watching the whole video. If you learned anything in this video, like it, and then subscribe and ring the little bell so that you know when I put out new videos. Check the description link for a written summary and bonus tips to make mixing with a compression easier and faster. Once you've done that, go write something worth recording.